dear friends good morning and welcome to the lecture of eminence by padma bhushan professor jb joshi friends today we are blessed with the august presence of professor jb joshi amongst us he is popular among his students as jbj and srct is very fortunate to receive his continuous guidance on several research topics the scientific community and knowledge society of today has been witnessing his new and clear vision in nuclear engineering research his radiance of intelligence in the solar energy research and his tremendous potential in the field of chemical engineering research he is a reservoir of knowledge in petroleum and petrochemical industry field today dear friends covid 19 has thrown before us a plethora of opportunities to forge ahead in the field of r&d india's young scientists and engineers are reasonably capable of taking the challenge literally head on professor jb joshi will open today in front of you a treasure of diamond thoughts and golden opportunities of research in the field of science and engineering and will show you a way ahead to take india on the top i personally and on on behalf of srict thank professor joshi for accepting our respect respect request to deliver this lecture today thank you sir over to you sir please thank you principal wa uh honorable chairperson uh, mrs sandra shraw the force behind the sri city shri ashok pajwani principal wa other faculty members and my dear student friends i am myself part of the family of sri city and i am very pleased to be uh, amongst you today i'll be talking about uh, prosperity of our nation i want to put before you the large number of opportunities uh, which are available in india and how we should mold ourselves to capture those opportunities to encash those opportunities and benefit not only oneself but the entire society and i'm going to tell you success stories also so that you will get the confidence that we can also do it because those success stories have also been executed by the students which look similar to any other students they are uh, they are all ict students and uh, uh, you are also ict sr ict so i'm i'm uh, i'm confident that uh, you will also take many of these ideas forward uh, all our educational institutes like uh, ict they strive uh for uh, becoming world renowned institutes whether we can be capable of uh becoming comparable with anybody in the world so what is anybody in the world the next slide say for example if we take university of cambridge so in from their mission statement i have taken out only important part are you able to see the slides everybody yeah yes sir the mission of the university of cambridge is to contribute to society through the pursuit of education and learning and research at the highest international levels of excellence this is their uh, uh mission statement we know mit US, usa is definitely very well known university what do they say the institute is committed to generating uh can we these photographs can we uh generating disseminating and preserving knowledge and working with others to bring this knowledge uh and the to solve the world's greatest challenges 
In the next slide, the another the we know College of Engineering at Pune ensuring academic excellence and fostering research, innovation, and entrepreneurial attitude. ICT Mumbai, that is my institute and institute of many of us. Let us read only the red part. We shall be creators of sprouting knowledge and design cutting edge technologies that will have the greatest impact on society and benefit mankind at large. IIT Mumbai, again the red part, and generates new knowledge for society and industry. So you will see that there is a lot of commonality in terms of the uh, mission statements or vision statements or the, in general, the objectives of uh, the educational institutes. Next slide. So if we see vision of SRI city, it also falls in the same domain as international institutes to strive world-class institute to impart knowledge, quality technical education, and develop leaders required by chemical and allied industries. There is also, in addition, in SRI city, there is one more statement. Next slide. SRI city is about finding solutions to social exclusion and disintegration and will look to work with private, public, and third sector partners in stimulating cohesion, entrepreneurship, economic development, and involvement in neighborhood renewal and regeneration within community of chemical industries at Akhileshwar. So everywhere in all the leading colleges of the world, what do they say? Next slide. Point number one, we shall generate new knowledge through research. That is most important part. Whatever problems are, are there of the society and industry, we will try to find solutions. And after finding the solutions, we will disseminate that knowledge. How to disseminate? Our principal way of disseminating is to teach students and to get solutions of the problems done through the students. And when such technologies get developed, then give these technologies to the industry. And industry always faces uh, several opportunities, several uh, challenges in terms of uh, increasing the yield, increasing the throughput, increasing the safety, increasing reducing the pollution to the environment. Large number of problems are faced by not only Indian industry, by global industry, and they need solutions. So dissemination of whatever knowledge we create, what I, what I have done up till now, I read the vision statements of all the leading institutes in the world, including ICT and SRICT. And what is the commonality? That is generate new knowledge, for solving the societal problems and disseminate the knowledge through students and directly to industry and society. This is very, very important. And all the institutes like us, they should engage themselves, redefine their, uh, their activity in order to satisfy their own uh, uh, statement of vision and mission. There is an observation which is written in the blue, more than 50% of innovations which are commercialized finally, are those are used in education, they happen in the university atmosphere. About 25 to 30% happen in national laboratories. And in industry, this is an observation which gives us a very, very great responsibility on educational institutions to create an innovative atmosphere in, in, the, in the institute so that through the discussions, through the experiments, through the modeling, 
we come out with nice ideas one after the another and we create such an ambience in the institute so that everybody is smiling and uh, and thinking of solving some or other problems that is a, some kind of enjoyment it is not a burden it is not a burden so what do we mean in an uh, educational institution there should be a balanced approach between fundamental science that we teach engineering science that we teach the innovations through research and the implementation all these things must happen simultaneously then we can be called a world class institute next slide so as far as india is concerned what is the acute problem that our nation is facing i have selected the title prosperity of our nation through science and technology so what are the different problems that our nation is facing plenty problems actually uh, we can say that our our country is rich in terms of number of problems the number of problems that our nation is facing is much more than any other nation that is facing the problems so the according to me the most important problem that the nation uh, is feeling is the poverty and uh, here i have listed some of the nations by the way uh, there are 152 nations and the first column gives the gdp ranking that is uh, per capita income the country's name is the second column the actual gdp is in the third column and uh, the innovation ranking that is the country's ability to innovate something to find problems to the solution <laughs> finding solutions to variety of problems now we know that there are variety of countries the google is a innovation microsoft is a innovation then uh, maybe there are several in chemical sector also there is a, there are several innovations like synthesizing ammonia or nitric acid uh, the innovations in terms of catalyst so this uh, the ability to innovate something and if there is something new and novel then there is a possibility of huge market throughout the world and capture the market throughout the world and hence earn for their nation and we call them as the developed countries so all the developed countries uh, here what i have tried to show you that the developed countries they get developed through only innovations uh, and innovations in science and technology in particular there are many isms like say communism socialism fundamentalism and many isms are there but all these some of these isms perhaps they guide us in terms of distributing the wealth but none of them can generate wealth only science and technology can generate wealth and science and technology means ability to innovate in science and technology that can only generate wealth and if you see in the next slide in the list of 152 nations our ranking in terms of gdp is 140 that is 12th from the bottom and it is about 1 lakh rupees per person per year that is 1688 us dollars and our innovation ranking is also very poor is of the order of 81 so if you plot really in the next slide the per capita income or innovation ranking with the gdp ranking you will see the straight line that is if you are poor in innovations then you are anyway poor so for making our nation prosperous uh, it is abundantly clear that we should uh, be able to uh, innovate we should generate those abilities imbibe those abilities of innovation and innovation at a stage 
uh, it looks difficult, but I'm going to give you several examples where uh, all these innovative developments in terms of novel designs, novel software, or novel processes, everything is, is possible. Uh, now, in spite of um, the, our ranking being poor, our nation is being poor, we are buying plenty things from outside. Now, in the recent past, you must have read in newspapers that we are buying worth 5 lakh crore rupees material from China. We get uh, the Ganesh idol also we import from China. The uh, decoration material for all the functions we get from China. So 5 lakh crore is a, is a really a big amount. It is practically 4 or 5% of our nations. And to this uh, one nation, in the last uh, five years, heads of many nations have visited us. The Prime Minister of Australia, South Africa, Canada, Israel, uh, and the head of China also. They did plenty things in India, but the most important thing that they, must, they have done is they have signed an agreement for something to export from their nation to our nation. And we are left and right buying from outside more than 20, 25 lakh crore we are importing. We are importing energy, we are importing electronics, we are importing uh, the uh, mechanical uh, gadgets and many, many more things. So, if we innovate, uh, I'm going to come to the success stories, but next slide, please. So why our nation is poor? Uh, the income of any nation comes from three sources. One is industrial activity, second is agricultural, and third is service sector. Now, since you and me, all of us are from chemical sector. Let us start from chemical sector. That is uh, the worldwide market for chemical industry is 14 million crores, 14 million crores. So that is approximately uh, 100 times more than the total income of our nation. Only chemical industry turnover is 100 times the total income of our nation. How much we are participating? Two lakh crores. That is only 1.4%. What I'm going to tell you uh, in the uh, first 10, 15 minutes of my lecture is why our nation is poor. So it is uh, only 1.4%. That is our uh, participation in the worldwide market is only 1.4%. I must say at uh, this moment that uh, UPL is exception. If you see the UPL's balance sheet, 88% is international market, only 12% is the Indian market. So such very, very few exceptions are there. There are some uh, uh, some companies in perfumery area, some companies in some specialty area, but these are, you can measure them with, the, with, with fingers, they are very small. If you see herbal healthcare, Ayurveda, we claim that that is the um, science developed by our nation. How much is the worldwide scope? 1.5 million crores. And 28% uh, of the herbal healthcare market is captured by China. And last year, the Nobel Prize uh, in herbal healthcare was also gained by scientists in China. How much we are doing business? 1.5 lakh uh, crores. That is 1 lakh 50,000 crores. Then, which is 1.5%. Electronics, 
talk about TVs, talk about mobiles, talk about any electronic gadget, we make only 0.1%. Biotechnology, we make 0.9%. Energy, we make 4%. So everywhere, uh, our participation in the international market is 1% plus minus, say, 0.5%. What I'm trying to emphasize is what are the reasons for uh, our nation being poor. If one of the income source is industry, and if you are participating only one, 1.5%, so that is the major source, and we are doing uh, very poorly there. Next slide. Next is agriculture, and here I have listed uh, several agricultural items, rice, wheat, mangoes, sugarcane, bananas. You can see that the agricultural productivity in India in third column is more or less three times less whatever is proven in the world. Onions, 16 tons, proven is 67 tons. Cotton is 1.6 tons and 4.6 in the world. Rice is 3.3 tons, what is proven in the world is 10.8. In some of the items, it is even 10 times less, 25 times less. Put a, a tomatoes, it is 19 and 524. It is uh, approximately 25 times less. The next slide, the third uh, income source is service sector. And from all our engineering colleges, the good students, they join IT industry because the salary is very attractive. But what work that, you, that we do in India? What is the job content in the service sector? We get good salary, say 40,000, 60,000 rupees per month, but it is a service sector, but the service sector in the world, they have generated such a valuable softwares and they are gaining market throughout the world and creating wealth for their nations. Whereas uh, uh, in our own service sector, we really do, we are servicing other nations. It is uh, more or less at the lowest level of IT that we are working. We are getting money from outside, therefore salary is good. But uh, what exactly we should really introspect that if we are, uh, intelligent, if you are a good engineer coming out of from a good college, then is this what we meant while taking the education? So while we are poor, the, these three sectors put together, that is agriculture, industry, and service sector put together, form 70% of the income, and uh, India also earns 70% from these three sectors. And overall, total income of the nation is about 140 lakh crores. Our population is 140 crores. Divide the income uh, by the population, the answer is per capita is one lakh rupees. While our nation is poor, we are buying plenty things for set. Maybe one or two, uh, I, just now I told you, uh, we are buying from China five lakh crores and many other nations. But see the uh, opportunities. The, uh, our eastern coast, the sand contains about 50% titanium. And titanium is such an important metal. We are selling the sand to outside nations where technology is there, not more than six rupees a kilogram, where 50% titanium is there. And we are buying titanium from outside at 2,500 rupees a kilogram. And there are a big list of items from uh, uh, China. Uh, recently, Government of India has released a list of about uh, uh, 28 items that we are importing, which is worth 80,000 crores. And uh, the, there is a a request from our nation to all the educational institutes as well as industry, why we should not stop the import? What is so difficult in all those processes in terms of chemistry and, and technology? So while 
we are though we are poor we are also are not utilizing uh, these days i am visiting the districts of our uh, uh, the, the state of maharashtra and particularly poor districts the north is nandurbar south sindhudurga and gadchiroli in in the uh, in the east and i am talking to the farmers i am talking to the locals and trying to understand understand the problem so uh, the japanese scientists they did a survey of all the lentils which are grown in the nandurbar district and typical price of lentil is about 40 rupees a kilogram and they found some lentil which is very good as health food and the uh, japanese are offering 200 rupees for that growth and japanese are making 2000 rupees by selling the health food uh, uh, using that as a raw material this is called innovation how to improve the wealth of our nation is through such innovations so why our nation is poor if we ask industry the academic institutions and common citizens now upl doesn't come in this category because in place of 1% they are doing 88% business internationally but typically if we ask any average industry those who are unable to do international business then what is that they say the our country has poor infrastructure the cost of finance interest rate is still high in last 4 5 years there has been continuous reduction but still it is high uh, it is uh, 10 to 12% in india whereas in usa it is 5% uh, in switzerland it is 3% in middle east it is practically nil similarly the cost of energy is about 9 to 10 rupees per unit in india about uh, maybe 3 4 rupees in united states very less 1 rupee in switzerland and practically nothing in middle east so if this is the international condition then how our industry can become competitive throughout the throughout the world this is a typical industry those who are not doing international business uh, they they make these statements they also make a statement that government doesn't gives any incentives for r and d and most important statement they make is we do not get meaningful help from academic institutions and r&d institutions we are facing problems but the academics don't understand our problems and then don't view a good solution if you ask academia why our nation is poor then uh, uh, what they say we wish to do research but there is very this meager funding from the government there there is a poor availability of good students now uh, this i state in many of my lectures that is when i was a student 50 years ago the teachers then also were saying there is a poor availability of good students the same students have become teachers they have retired also the next generation has come and again the statement continues the poor availability of good students uh i have been teacher for 50 years as i told you and uh, i have a conviction and several proofs that the quality of students is improving year by year and all the technologies which have been developed in ict 95% work has been done by students there is no question about the suitability of students for doing good work but if we state that there is a poor availability of good students then we are bound to say that these days there is a poor availability of good teachers if we want to complain about each other now according to me this slide is very very important industry says we don't get any meaningful help from uh, academic institutions or r&d laboratory academic institutions say that we do lot of good research but we have to file it mainly because industry doesn't look at us we do not get meaningful support from industry now industry complains that there is a problem the problem with academics and their capability and academics have problems with industry that is we are plenty things to offer 
but industry doesn't come forward. Now there is a habit, my understanding of why the nation is poor, the principal reason is we just keep on complaining about everybody else and we keep on giving excuses. That is the principal reason why our nation is poor. If you ask the common man why our nation is poor, the quickly we get a statement that our politicians are not good until the politicians become clean, until then our nation is not going to improve. But I'm telling you very honestly that uh, when I was head of my institution, there were several reasons to meet the ministers. And I'm honestly telling you that their understanding of education was far better than whatever vice chancellor I had seen at that time. And their desire to improve education was also good. When I converted my institution from just a department to the university, separate university, I needed their help and they could understand the problem and the, the importance of autonomy. And, and, and they helped me tr tremendously. And on an individual basis, everybody feels that I'm doing a good job, somebody else should be doing a better job. I'm good, anyway, I'm good. So the summary of this slide is, we have a big list of excuses. If nation demands, if industry demands, if college demands something from their faculty or from students, we always have a list. Uh, whenever uh, a PhD student joins, I have uh, in my notebook, there are 14 excuses which I have written. And then uh, when a new student comes, and uh, if I had given a homework and uh, the student, I meet the student and ask him, uh, what is the current status of homework? And then he gives certain answer which is already printed in my notebook. I said, tell him that this is number seven excuse that you are giving me. So when this happens a couple of times that all these excuses are known to the teacher, then he better starts understanding the culture of creativity, the ambience of creativity. Once that student uh, stops complaining and smiling, this I tell to my students several times, the number of difficulties per day, this is going to happen. If in the evening, if you try to take summary of the, of the day, and if you have not faced two difficulties in, on that day, this means you have not done anything. If you have done anything, tried to do anything, then there will be difficulty. When difficulty is there, we start finding solution. And this way we learn, and this way, we uh, get into the atmosphere of creativity. How to create this ambience? In the family also, can we create an, an happy ambience? That is, I'm, I'm addressing to the students right now who are listening to my lectures. Whenever you go home, can we not thank our parents? How much you have done, thank you. So maybe after every three months or six months, they are not expecting anything from you. But this will create an, a very good atmosphere. If your sister is elder to you, tell her. And she must have done something definitely for you. Your teacher must have done something for you. Your, uh, your institute must have done something for you. So if you are grateful, then the ambience of creativity, the ambience of uh, the smiling, keeping in spite of several difficulties which will come, which is actually, uh, we are part of the nature. Nature is so big as compared to us that whatever is there in the nature we need to accept. It has problems, it has opportunities. And if we don't capture opportunities and keep on complaining about problems, then, then, then our nation is poor. That is the only reason. If we take 
all whatever problems we face we take the head on and try to find answers to these problems in a smiling manner all the time smiling manner then the ambience of the institute the ambience of the uh, that village or uh, that particular state of of our nation slowly it will start improving more or less now onwards i am going to give several success stories and examples of uh, uh, what is possible and what are the opportunities which we can capture but the uh, summary at the end is going to remain the same that is do not complain any time in life do not give excuses and keep on smiling all the time and how to do that how to make a change in our personality slowly i'll come to that in my end slide next slide the advanced countries they are advanced and there are reasons i have told you up till now also many times that they have scientists who innovate continuously for their own nation and i'm going to tell you in great detail two examples the two scientists whom i respect a lot and one is michael faraday this example i give many many times the family of michael faraday was very poor father mother and five uh five children michael faraday was one one of them father was serving as an assistant to blacksmith you can imagine a shop of blacksmith and he was assistant to that how much he can earn uh mother was not earning anything and michael faraday could not take education beyond eighth standard please remember he could not take education beyond eighth standard and he had to look for a job and he got a job of book binding there was a difference between michael faraday and other book binders please note my dear students michael faraday was reading every book before binding and in that process he came across a book called development of mind which was more or less please listen to this story very very carefully maybe in uh, in for 5 minutes i'm going to complete this story but please listen carefully how our mindset should be so he was reading the book and he uh, read this book of development of mind then he was attending le lectures related to science he was uh, the family was staying in the outskirts of london and in the main city of london uh, there used to be a lecture in the area of science which our marathi vidyan parishad is, is organizing on a continuous basis in mumbai and i want to enhance this scientific uh, temple uh, that is now my principal uh, principal activity so they uh, there was a lecture and there were three continuous lecture by uh, professor humphrey davy and uh, uh, michael faraday attended those three lectures a boy of maybe 15 16 years and education up to 8 standard but the well known chemist of that uh, that time my uh, the humphrey he was giving the lecture and he took 300 page notebook and michael faraday wrote on those 300 pages what is that i have understood and he had a courage to meet that professor and uh, requested him sir uh, i have written something which i have understood will you please go through and guide me the professor humphrey davy read that notebook of 300 pages the same night and called uh, faraday the next day 
and he praised him so much that you are of uh, 15, 16 years and your level of understanding, I'm really ter terribly impressed by you. Faraday said, if you are convinced, then uh, I need a job. Will you please give me a job? And Humphrey Davy gave him a job uh, of laboratory assistant. You must have seen laboratory assistants in our research laboratories or even in our colleges. What do they do? They clean floors, they clean tables, they clean glassware, uh, they keep all the chemical bottles at their regular positions. And then whatever work is assigned by the teacher or scientist, take the file from this place to that place. That is the job Michael Faraday was doing. Again, there were plenty scientists in the laboratory and there was a difference between Michael Faraday and other scientists. Other scientists were working 10 to five. My dear students, you please listen. I'm again requesting you please listen to this story. All the scientists were working 10 to five as soon as the uh, five o'clock, the time was five o'clock, the scientists were starting for going home. Michael Faraday throughout the day was helping everybody and at five o'clock evening, he would start research and, and keep on doing it till two o'clock night, five to two, maybe about seven, eight to nine hours. And during a period of about eight to 10 years, how much work he did. Here is a list, study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. All of us have learned the Faraday's laws of electrolysis. Principles underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism and electrolysis established that magnetism could affect the rays of light invention of electromagnetic rotary devices. Now these days we are using motors, but the principle of motors was invented by Faraday. He also discovered benzene. He also discovered the Bunsen burner. Now see a man and his education was at standard. The University of Oxford at that time, the vice chancellor met him and said to Michael Faraday, our university is ready to give PhD, a doctorate degree. Faraday said, I don't need it. I don't need PhD. I'm doing my work. And this was on the basis that he had read the book, Development of Mind, which is more or less parallel to Bhagavad Gita. I don't need it. Then uh, there is a uh, academy called Royal Society in London, most respected science academy in the world. And the scientists throughout the world, they aspire for the fellowship of the Royal Society in, in London. That Royal Society, the president went to him and requested him, will you please become a fellow of Royal Society? He said, I don't need fellowship. I don't want it. Queen at that time wanted to uh, give him an honor like Bharat Ratna, but he said, I don't need it, I don't want it. If you people want to do anything, when I die and you bury me, you just write one sentence, sentence there, a happy man is lying here why a nation is rich and why the nation is poor, the answer is lying here. Are we doing that quality of, can we introspect honestly? And, and I'm going to tell this in detail, but are we introspecting honestly? What exactly did I do in last one month? Did I do in the last one week? What did I do? I'm getting a salary of two lakh rupees. The poor nation is having per year income of one lakh rupees, and I'm getting two lakh rupees per month, and the poor nation is paying me two lakh rupees, what exactly is I'm giving back to the nation? Uh, I'm going to come to such points at the end, 
and such introspection will tell us what is the responsibility on our individual basis. The next slide is again similar example, but as far as Michael Faraday is concerned, his uh, the, uh, the big size photograph was displayed by the famous scientist, scientist Einstein in his own library. And as soon as he was starting his work, he was standing in front of photograph of Faraday and he was telling in public lectures that I get my total inspiration of the day from Michael Faraday's photograph. He was saying if Nobel Prize was existing at the time of Faraday, he would have received at least six Nobel Prizes. Eight standard students did not get PhD, did not, did not accept PhD. That kind of commitment. The Mary Curie's is the same. Her family was not poor. Her father was headmaster and family was doing very well. Only point was uh, her mother was not keeping a good health. But a good family became poor when Russia invaded Poland. And those who were nationalists at that time, uh, they started getting trouble. And her father was nationalist and he was removed from India. But then, he, then the family became poor. At the same time, uh, Mary was in 12th standard and she stood first in the entire Poland, the first rank. But within brothers and sisters, a decision had to be taken because of poverty, who will take education? And then uh, there was a dialogue between Mary and her elder sister, elder by four years. So her elder sister said, you have stood first in the nation. This means that you are really capable of taking higher education. And Mary convinced her elder sister saying that you are four years elder to me. If you don't take education now, then you will not get any opportunity. And then Mary took a job. What is the job she took? The house mistress, again, cleaning the floors and uh, washing the clothes, washing the utensils and taking care of small children. But again, there was a difference between uh, other similar girls and Mary. There was a, in Warsaw city of Poland at the center place, there, there was a big laboratory and anybody could come and do whatever want, maybe in physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. And she was spending four hours in that laboratory. And there was a big library attached to that. So she should read whatever curiosities are there. She will try to find the answers through the published information or she will do some experiments. And then from the age of 18 to 24, you imagine my dear friends, you were also 18 and now you are closing to 21, 22. And imagine up to 24, you don't take education in between and do the job of cleaning the houses and uh, utensils and clothes. And then still maintain what I'm trying to tell you, the what should be the mindset of people in the nations, those who become advanced countries. She became, she went to France. You, you, you know the subsequent story. She together with her husband, she got a Nobel Prize in, in physics. Then uh, soon later, her husband died while crossing a road in accident. Now you imagine you can bring in front of your eyes a lady, a husband is died. How much complaint she should be doing? Plenty reasons are there and these are natural reasons. But she continued her research and she continued the research atmosphere in the family. And she got another Nobel Prize. Not only that, the, the research ambience in the house, her daughter as well as the son-in-law, they also got Nobel Prizes. She did so much work 
in, in chemistry and as well as physics. The, I'm repeating the same statement that is so much, whenever the uh, citizens of nation have this kind of commitment, then only the nation becomes rich. Otherwise, these are the principal reason for, for our poverty. Next slide. I'm going to tell you several examples. This particular example I must have said when I was there last year or when I gave lecture five to 10 years back, but I'm really telling you the real story uh, why the nation is poor. The uh, uh, hydrogenation is used quite frequently in chemical industry for uh, converting nitro compound to amino compound, for saturating double bonds, for uh, converting the CN bond to CH2, NH2, or for saturating um, aniline to uh, cyclohexylamine. And there are many, many examples where hydrogenation is required. In uh, early 80s, what our nation was doing was taking uh, iron filings in uh, tons in the reactor, and suppose nitrobenzene is to be converted into aniline or parahydroxy nitrobenzene to be converted to be paraminophenol, which is also an item which we are abundantly uh, purchasing, importing from China. So put parahydroxy nitrobenzene on, on the iron filings and then later on put uh, hydrochloric acid. So we know that iron plus hydrochloric acid generates hydrogen, and this nascent hydrogen was reacting with uh, uh, nitrobenzene or parahydroxy nitrobenzene to give respect to, uh, respect to amine. And this was happening from years together, right from 1940 to early 80s. There was a huge problem with this process one is the if you take cost of the iron filings uh, per kilogram of the product, it was expensive process. It was also expensive because we were getting three kilogram of solid uh, waste for one kilogram of product, and solid waste was retaining some of the active active product, and therefore also the process was expensive. But most importantly most of the amino compounds, they are carcinogenic. And three kgs of solid waste, the disposal of that was a huge problem, and there was no good solution at that time. However, the industrialists were knowing, I'm telling you the story of early 80s, uh, industrialists in India, they were knowing that uh, throughout the world, there is a process called catalytic hydrogenation. And the catalysts were also known. But when those catalysts were used, it was taking three days, four days for hydrogenation, and it was not becoming economical. And the reactors which give the hydrogenation in two hours or three hours, such reactors were available in Germany and Switzerland. Therefore, my friend industrialist, this story I take, there let there be any opportunity of giving lecture, I give this, uh, definitely tell this story and um, bring out why our nation is poor. So my industry friend requested me to go to Switzerland and try to get quotation for uh, a two-ton reactor. Uh, I went there, obviously the quotation was not only getting quotation, getting friendship, getting more information, etc. So the quotation for two ton reactor was 10 crores. Quotation for two ton reactor was 10 crores. At that time, early 80s or mid 80s, the dollar was 10 rupees. This means the quotation was one crore dollars. And one crore dollars now is 70 crore rupees. 70 crore, it was 10, 10 rupees at that time. So obviously 10 crores was out of question. I came back and told the industrialist that uh, it is out of our, if we buy such equipment from outside 
and consider depreciation and interest, whatever the paracetamol that we make, the cost will, uh, will not be competitive as compared to the import and we'll have to continue the, continue the import. Our process will be never economical. And this is the story in general of our industry. Innovation, local innovations are very less and therefore our processes are not competitive. The product price, the quality, etc. these are not competitive and therefore we are not able to export and we import from China only those 28 chemicals we are spending 8,000 crores and, 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 and buying them. So I came back. But my friend, uh, he said, the fabrication facility in India is very good. I think let us get only drawings from Switzerland and fabricate here. So we will save some money. We'll save. How much money we will save? My friend was not knowing and I was also not knowing. So I went back to the Switzerland and uh, again asked the quotation for only drawings. You don't worry about fabrication. Our nation has made huge advancements uh, in terms of fabrication and precision fabrication can be done in India. You just give, give the drawings. The, they were very happy. They were very happy to give the drawings and quotation of the drawing was 9 crore 70 lakh rupees. If you buy the equipment, 10 crores for only drawings, 9 crore 70 lakh, and in the remaining 30 lakh rupees, you say whatever you want. Actually, Switzerland, it was winter season, but my blood boiled in Switzerland. That is, our nation is being taken for granted by all these rich nations, and this should not happen. And then with the help of my students, which are like anybody in India, over a period of two years, the metal, by the way, in the reactor was equivalent to about 10 lakh rupees. And they were uh, putting 10, 10 crores. So within two years, the first reactor was uh, uh, established in uh, Bombay Oil Industries, second in the nitride. And this, up till now, 150 technologies have been developed in catalytic hydrogenation. Our UPL also has uh, about three to four reactors. And using the technology, that technology, we have plenty of reactors in India. What is the message from here? The total cost of manufacture of two ton reactor with new technology, 10 ton metal, and all the expenses added, eventually it became 30 lakh rupees. 10 crores and 30 lakh rupees. Then of course, this reactor was not important. And when uh, this was available, uh, people started making it, buying it, and, and that gave an export market of more than 10,000 crores. This is the answer to the poverty of our, our nation. Now here I'm going to tell you only one type of technology which I'm going to use throughout the lecture, only one type of technology that is computational fluid dynamics. That is, suppose we want to hydrogenate we want the availability of hydrogen throughout the reactor and how to make that by understanding the fluid mechanics that I'm going to tell you. Now, I'm not able to show things with the help of pointer, but you are able to see the impeller and below that is a sparger through which the hydrogen is passed. The bubbles are broken by the impeller and they are distributed throughout. But hydrogen solubility in uh, aqueous or organic medium is very poor and most of the hydrogen goes to the gas space without any reaction. And that is only 10-15% reacts and 80-85% goes to the gas space. Now we cannot let hydrogen to the atmosphere. Hydrogen was never cheap. These days it is 600 rupees a kilogram if it is made from water electrolysis. If you take it as a side product from caustic chlorine, 
and also it is 1620 rupees per meter cube or maybe 200 250 rupees a kilogram so it is expensive and 90 percent we letting to the atmosphere is not a good idea and it is uh, explosive also so from safety point of view also it is not not a good idea so whatever is unreacted should come back to the reactor and if you do it by external compressor that is also not a acceptable solution because external hydrogen line is also not, for, not a safe process and compressors are even more expensive than, than the reactors. So the technology was like this, the next slide. That is unreacted gas space you see and the impeller is now surrounded by a hood and hood has opening. And we know that whenever impeller rotates in the vicinity of the impeller, a low pressure region is created. When impeller is not rotating, there is a hydrostatic head of H rho G, whatever is the height of gas liquid solid dispersion above that, multiplied by multiplied by rho multiplied by G, that is the pressure here. But when impeller rotates and pressure decreases, and where the pressure reduction is equivalent to less than the gas space, then the hydrogen starts moving through the space between the hood and the shaft and the hydrogen is available uh, available inside the liquid the next slide the uh, here you can see uh, in the previous slide that hydrogen bubbles are restricted only in the top region but since the resistance for the flow hrog is small the rate of induction is very high when the impeller is located below the bubbles are available everywhere, but the resistance to overcome HROG is large and rate of induction is less. Again, innovation was required. Next slide. So using the impeller at the top, you get, uh, you get good quantity of induction, but design and another impeller, dispersing impeller, which disperses, distributes the induced bubbles everywhere. And in catalytic hydrogenation, we need to suspend the catalyst and design the efficient impeller, next slide, in such a way that the particles are suspended. Now, this is the technology. But what is that uh, principal point I have communicated? To understand the fluid mechanics and understand the relationship between the local fluid mechanics and our objective. Our first objective was in the self-inducing impeller, that is create a low pressure region, which is even lower than the gas space. What was the job of the second impeller? That is the bubbles which are induced, disperse them everywhere. So what kind of fluid mechanics we should generate in the reactor so that at as low energy as possible, the bubbles are generated. And it is well known that good dispersing impellers, they cannot suspend solid particles and therefore, there has to be another design for solid suspension. And this design is now implemented in India. Please note the same Swiss company reduced the price from 10 crores to 2 crores. In the meantime, rupee went from 10 rupees to 30 rupees, but nobody in India purchased their equipment. If you want to do this like this, now there is, a, there is one industry with whom I am working we know that German products, they, their precision is very good. And they look also nice, they perform also nice. But the company with whom I'm working in Nashik, that is Technoforce, several equipment have been developed innovatively and they are not only uh, implemented in India, they are being exported in big number. The pilot plant, is now, uh, these people initially what they were saying that they were not believing, though they could see the performance. So they suggested that, can you have a display of your equipment library in Europe? And therefore the uh, Technoforce owner, he put a pilot plant in, uh, in Netherlands and uh, it was locally available there. Now in those products, Germany has stopped making. That company stopped 
making uh, some of those equipment and the employees there, they have joined the Nashik company for, for selling them. What I'm trying to tell you that this is possible. This is possible by any institute, by any, any student. Uh, the, we just need to create that kind of creative ambience in the atmosphere, the local atmosphere. The teachers are capable, the students are capable. The, uh, what we should inhale in the premises of the college is always creativity and happiness and smilingness throughout. And that will create such. The next slide. Uh, here there is an example of making hydrogen peroxide. Uh, since I have many, many examples and I'm going to take a lot more time from now, I will skip this. But uh, our local industry was facing a problem that a side product was getting formed in a continuous process. And in the continuous process of liquid, uh, if solids are formed, then there are problems of choking and stoppage of the continuous process every 10 days. And therefore, this problem uh, had come to our institute. Then we first of all understood the rate controlling step in the chemistry and uh, the, what exactly is important. In the previous example, the relationship between fluid mechanics and pressure, relationship between flow pattern fluid mechanics and distribution of gas, the relationship between fluid mechanics and suspension of particles, this understanding was required. In this example, the suspension of catalyst was very important and it was creating difficulty because suspension was being done by creating turbulence by bubbling the gas. And that there was a difficulty that uh, hydrogen was getting dissolved and too much hydrogen available in the liquid was uh, uh, giving sad products. So when we vary in a simple manner changed the hardware and gave the job of catalyst suspension to the liquid flow and not to the gas flow. And then with one third, the energy supply to the reactor, earlier it was 70% conversion and 90% selectivity. It turned to 70% conversion, 100% selectivity, 80% conversion, 100% selectivity eventually 100% conversion and 100% selectivity. So with this, the technology became very impressive, better than best in the world. And then we started getting the wealth from the outside nations. Next slide. This is the technology in making the, uh, this is what exactly I'm skipping this, I would have would like to explain this example, how the fluid flow was changed in such a way that the job of solid suspension was given to liquid flow and how liquid flow was creating much better job than the solid suspension by the gas, gas phase. Next slide. Let us skip, Let, next. The tartalic acid is a raw material for polyester. And uh, this technology of uh, oxidizing parasilin to tartalic acid is important technology. But there was a problem, that is uh, the oxidation occurs by uh, oxygen in air and xylene is dissolved in uh, acetic acid is used as a solvent. Uh, so there were plenty problems in the technology, but two most important problems were per Turn of the product, while parasilin was being oxidized, acetic acid was also burning. And per ton of product, we were needing 80 kilograms of acetic acid. They were burning. So this particular process was understood in the laboratory. What exactly is the rate controlling step? And then when it was found that the there is a radical mechanism. Uh, I told you that there were two acute problems. One was acetic acid. There was a lot of loss of acetic acid 
and second problem was being a radical mechanism the parasitic radicals were attaching each other and polymerizing and therefore the color was converting if the low level of polymerization yellow then brown and then eventually black and the yellow color brown color is not acceptable for making uh, polyester polyester fiber so this was understood and the relationship between fluid mechanics and dissolved quantity of oxygen which is the rate controlling step that was done it was addressed now that 80 kg is has reduced to less than 40 kg and the uh, the quality of tartaric acid is super white when it was understood properly and the impellers were designed in such a way to get the, get the quality now this particular technology is now used throughout the world so we can do it we can do it next slide so this is how that uh, oxidation occurs i am not going to the details schematically the impellers i have shown you cannot get anything uh, from this picture but when i come to your college i will explain to you what is the relationship between impeller design and fluid mechanics and fluid mechanics and different jobs i told you five jobs just now that is induction of gas distribution of gas suspension of solid particles and increase the dissolved quantity of oxygen and reduce the burning rate of acetic acid so and this is the basics of chemical engineering we learn the subjects of fluid flow we learn heat transfer we learn mass transfer we learn the reaction engineering and then we need to use all these subjects uh, in in our commercial practice next slide this is froth flotation uh, you must have studied this unit uh, operation of froth flotation the uh, uh, in the whatever natural or we get there is something desirable and undesirable and uh, we create gas liquid dispersion and uh, we add some surfactants and those which are hydrophilic particles they attach to the bubbles and we get froth at the top and those which don't attach which we don't want also they get removed from the froth flotation now here the uh, for attaching particles to the bubble there should be a chance for both of them coming together so we need a certain quality of turbulence for bringing the particles and bubbles closer to each other but if we increase the turbulence beyond that then there is a detachment whatever attachment has happened is detachment and the classical denver machine for flotation only 40% of the volume was having the desired intensity away from the impeller there was very poor turbulence and in the vicinity of the impeller it was such a intense turbulence that it was whatever was done everywhere was undone by the impeller we with the help of understanding the fluid mechanics of fluidized beds we are now able to create exactly the right turbulence throughout the reactor every point in the reactor the right quality of turbulence by the selection of the size of the particle the settling velocity of the particle and whatever particles are what is the what are the benefits 7% of the worldwide energy 7% of the total energy is used in crushing and grinding and in classical flotation machines we need to grind and therefore spend this kind of now in flotation machines which is fluidized bed type we don't need crush any so we save next slide we save a lot of money lot of energy but see the performance the classical is lower most some development is the middle line and the the advanced version in ict is at at the top so at a given power consumption of 10 kilowatts say we get 60% recovery in classical 65 in improved a uh, jensen cell but we get close to 90% in uh, in, in the newly developed the innovated uh, uh, flotation machine but this is a less important if you want to have a 65% 
then uh, one classical flotation machine can give 65 percent and for getting 65 of remaining 35 we need another machine and for getting 90 95 percent recovery we need four five flotation machines whereas the fluidized bed which is less expensive is able to do without any moving parts is able to give in one machine itself next slide so the chromatographic separation we know chromatography in the laboratory where the components they can be separated and they look like peaks there but can it be done commercially industrially can we done one ton per day and not um, uh, inject microliters inject several tons and whether we can separate from each other so let's see the next slide and see the next slide the most important part was how to uh, uh, give exactly identical atmosphere to the all the particles so that all the particles remain active and we develop the technology on the basis of fractal which is also a part of fluid mechanics next slide i would have explained it to you but the see imagine just click it again yeah so liquid enters at the center then it bifurcates then it bifurcates that is fractal and there are outlets at the end of and therefore the path from center to any one of the end is identical and therefore uh, excellent distribution was possible and the technology of uh, the adsorptive or chromatographic separation has been developed in ICT. Now this technology I have already mentioned, it is not for microgram, this is not for a gram, this is not for kilogram, this is for several tons per day. And that kind of uh, the return, the stationary phase, we need to maintain in such a way that it remains efficient as good as the chromatography in the laboratory. Next slide. I'm going to give you another example, very important example of manufacture of carbon nanotubes. Uh, for some research for making a nano-based catalyst, I was needing carbon nanotubes. Please listen to this example very carefully. I'm now raising my voice. So I send an inquiry throughout, throughout the world for getting carbon nanotubes. And the quotation for one gram was $60 from US. China, $10 per gram. And the requirement here was so huge, which I'm going to explain, this was not acceptable. So we developed fluidized bed synthesis of carbon nanotubes with the help of scientists in uh, BRC where last 10, 11 years I'm working. And uh, uh, there was a huge participation. We created an ambience in such a way that these $65 one gram, $10 one gram, now we are able to make one kilogram in $10. See how much wealth is embedded in the knowledge. Why Swiss company was 14, 10 crores of rupees? The difference between 10 lakh and 2 crores was the knowledge for that reactor design. Similarly here, the knowledge of making nanoparticles is the, otherwise the, uh, we need some carbon source. We are using acetylene or methane. They are also using acetylene or methane or ethyl alcohol. And that price is international price. But uh, how to put the catalyst in the fluidized bed, and most importantly, whatever is, suppose we are using acetylene, how to get 100% utilization of acetylene? How to uh, simplify the pre-treatment and after treatment so that cost can come down, and this is now $10. So again, with the help of the credit is, immense credits of uh, my friends in uh, atomic energy. We uh, went further and developed composite 
with ultra high molecular weight uh, polyethylene for the application of bulletproof jackets my students are two boys two girls with the, the whatever composite was made they stitched themselves five jackets themselves and sent to five leading laboratories in india for testing and all the five laboratories gave five positive response saying that these are uh, these are up to the mark and these can be used by military and the police of our nation import 1.5 lakh rupees the first 5 10 20 50 we could make in 50 50000 rupees as the scale increased 30000 rupees per per bullet proof jacket now we are able to make in 15000 rupees so the message went around and our honorable prime minister he announced in lok uh, sabha the lower house that india now has a technology for making bulletproof jackets now onwards we need not import imagine 1.5 lakh rupees and we were needing 6 lakh bulletproof jackets you can you can take a multiplication and how much money we were going uh, giving outside why our nation is poor this is the reason we are left and right giving money but that is not that doesn't hurt me much what hurts me that those who are supplying bulletproof jackets to our nation if they say instead of 1.5 lakh rupees you pay 2 lakh rupees or 2.5 or even 3 lakh rupees we are not going to give you bulletproof jackets and then imagine the condition of our military this is the condition the, the french made uh, uh, aeroplanes you know the story and uh, they were, uh, the entire story was being criticized left and right in newspapers that some uh, minister is getting some money, some industry is getting benefited, etc., etc. But no paper or no high level person was indicating that we are importing because we don't have knowledge. If we would have knowledge, then this problem would not have arisen. Why our nation is poor? And that I'm sure. If we, we make it, the cost will come down by a factor of three, five, ten. And then in the case of uh, carbon nanotubes, it is more than 100 times uh, reduction. Next slide. Now we are using these carbon nanotubes uh, for many other applications like hydrogen storage. Uh, see, uh, the explosion in atomic power plant is basically because of hydrogen. What happened in Fukushima is uh, uh, when uh, the pump stopped, the cooling water to the, uh, to the region where fission reaction happens, that stopped and temperature increased. And that temperature, the metal reacted with water and hydrogen was generated. And there was enough air inside. Explosion happened between hydrogen and, and oxygen. So if we change, modify the design of the atomic power plant and put some quantity of uh, carbon nanotubes so that whatever maximum hydrogen can be produced, it can be stored in that carbon nanotubes. Then, so for this technology we wanted, there is a huge requirement of catalyst based on nanotubes. And, uh, and therefore, uh, I'll make the story short. Uh, and uh, now a, a batch plant and continuous plants both have been uh, both have been developed and they are they are successfully running uh, the uh, honorable prime minister together with uh, the authorities of atomic energy they decided to give the uh, manufacture of bulletproof jackets more than 1 lakh per per year to a tata group to Tata Group and they are doing really a good job. So this way, not only we saved money, the wealth of our nation is preserved, the wealth of our nation is improved, but 
the security of our nation is much more important. Uh, wealth is definitely important. The, today's lecture is on the wealth, but uh, security related, I'm going to tell you maybe a couple of more points. Next slide. So here the relationship, this is the continuous process for making carbon nanotubes. I will not explain it right now. Next slide. This is the batch process, and now we can make up to 25 kilograms. Next slide. So we, it's a two kilo batch. This is the picture of a uh, bulletproof jacket, and uh, all the papers at that time, they flashed the news. And uh, since it was developed in atomic energy, it was given a name of Bhava Kawach in honor of Dr. Homi Bhava. Next slide. It appeared in all newspapers, Hindu, and the picture you see is of my student there. And everywhere, whenever there is a development, definitely there will be a picture of student and not teacher. The answer is very simple because 95% of the work they do. So they should get credit out of that. Next. Next. So all the newspapers there. And it is what it says, the imported uh, bulletproof jacket, its weight was 14 kilograms, and this is nine kilograms. So our uh, uh, military people, they were happier than earlier, carry 14 kilograms as against nine kilograms. And now research is ongoing, how to bring it down to six kilograms to nine kilograms, this will happen. But first of all, the problem is solved, the problem is solved not in a haphazard trial error manner by exactly understanding the here the 100% utilization of carbon source was important and how it is related to fluid mechanics. So that was understood properly and then this uh, technology was developed. Then for composite it was important to understand the relationship between all the bonds of of, of uh, polyethylene and the carbon nanotubes. So this way, the understanding fundamental science, the engineering science, the economics, and uh, developing the product which is useful for the nation, that generates wealth for the nation. Next slide. So if you want to make one lakh, then 2,500 kgs of CNT is required, which our nation can make because anyway, uh, we, have, uh, we have now a plan for, next slide. However, there are many other applications like catalyst and hydrogen storage and atomic power plant. So we need about 40 to 100 tons of uh, carbon nanotubes per reactor, and we wish to have 100 reactors in near future. So we need a lot of uh, carbon nanotubes and polymer composites there are huge applications. And now a technology is being developed for carbon nanofiber, not carbon CNT nanofibers. So CNT nanofibers are 10 times stronger than carbon, carbon fibers. And the CNT fiber is stronger than Kevlar, which is now considered as the strongest fiber. But nobody is going to give us a technology. We have to develop on our own. And, uh, for strategic applications and in space applications, all these materials are required. Next slide. So the technology has been taken further by nitrogen doping and boron doping in order to improve uh, the st storage capacity of carbon nanotubes. And then the technology is being developed for graphene, for two-dimensional uh, carbon uh, composite. The CNT fibers also, as I told you. Next slide. See, the carbon nanotubes, there are, in the first blue, there are companies in the world, from Hong Kong, USA, Russia, Canada. And price per gram is written in the last column, 1,600 rupees, 5,200 rupees, 8,300 rupees. And we are able to make in, Three rupees. We're able to make in three rupees, three rupees a gram. Next slide. So this is the costing 
all we engineers in the, in the company, they know how to do costing in terms of capital cost and operating cost. So if you want to have 16 kg per day a plant, the cost of production is 720 rupees per kg. But if we make it uh, one ton per day and continuous plant, then 350 rupees per kg. 350 rupees per kg, that is uh, $5. That is $5. And the first quotation was $60 for one gram. I'm talking this 350 rupees for a kilogram. Next slide. Now, the plenty opportunities in our nation. The first opportunity is combustion. Next slide. The, many of us come from village atmosphere and we know, know biomass based cook stoves. And 18 crore families are still using biomass based cook stoves. The current thermal efficiency is 12%. And if we can go to 40%, the calculation, then the wealth generation for the nation is 80,000 crores. So the next slide. And this will be a familiar picture from our uh, villages, how the cook stove looks like. The understanding fluid mechanics in biomass cook stove, please listen to me, is more difficult than atomic power plant. The shape, the geometry, the boundary conditions are very complex, but we cannot complain. We have to solve the problem. We, we cannot give excuse, and this problem is solved. But similar problem was being faced by the world in different terms. Next slide. That is, if you take a, uh, just see whether, oh, 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 oh. this is uh, uh, the presentation which you, I have a little bit modified in my presentation. The, the slide was uh, old model of a car where, uh, the efficiency of the car was up the order of 20-25% and lot of smoke was being uh, in the exhaust, through the exhaust, lot of smoke was coming out, that picture was there. So for the internal combustion engines, Princeton University, shown in violet, the company's General Motors Ford Chrysler and the national laboratories in the United States, they came together and worked for five years. And they tried to understand what are the problems really. There is a flame quenching problem, soot kinetics problem, compos complex composition of gasoline and diesel differing every day, flow through intake and exhaust, influence of fuel variability, knocking is a problem. So the industry, academia, and national laboratories work together. And they, in the next slide, they first of all found how the fuel is being used. Next slide. That is the green uh, arrow the, at the top, which was given 25% efficiency, uh, and the loss of 75%, the 40% of energy was going through exhaust, 30% was going to the coolant and 5% in the, in the friction. Research was done, whatever problems being faced, the understanding of fluid mechanics and say, suit formation. That is, whether every point in the cylinder of internal combustion engine, is it doing a good job of oxidation of fuel or some, some points are lazy in terms of not doing the job. And for making everybody work, how the fluid mechanics was verified, the varied, so that from 40% exhaust gas, first of all, 5% was taken to the effective power, and then eventually the 25% efficiency was improved to 44% efficiency. These scientists are my friends. When I visited them about 10 years ago, there was a big board on the, at, the, at the entrance of their laboratory we have reached 44% efficiency, but we shall increase the efficiency from 44% to 60% in next five years. Why the nation is poor and why the nation is rich. And we will definitely import these technologies from, uh, for uh, these internal combustion engines of 
various sizes and capacities and applications and then we will pay money to the outside and remain poor continue to remain poor so this is a similar problem i showed you a, a young girl sitting in front of cook stoves and having 12 percent efficiency uh, we started the work exactly at the same time when that internal combustion engine was had started in princeton and by by understanding the fluid mechanics in cook stoves we improved the efficiency from 12 percent to 40 percent next slide but prior to that uh, you remember my uh, earlier presentation that industry was saying that academic people don't solve our problems. They don't even understand our problems. And academic institutions, they were saying that we don't get any help from industry. And here is the answer to such problems. There has to be connectivity between the user and inventor. So I held such 40 workshops there are uh, about 25 housewives in front of me. And I was asking them, there is a improved Costo program right from uh, when we became free, 1950, and uh, about 60, 70 years have happened. Why you are not using improved Costo? So what I'm telling my academic friends is unless you go physically to industry, and try to understand the problem. Normally, we tend to solve the problems which can be solved. We don't solve the problems which are actual problems to be solved, which need to be solved. And those we can understand such problems only when we go to the location of problems, develop friendships, develop friendships with the floor people, to the middle management, with the senior management, with the owners, develop friendship at all the levels. If there is some difficulty at some level, the problem doesn't get solved. So it is very important to learn that particular technology of developing relationships at, at, at different, different levels. So here, please note, now this picture is from Gujarat. I went, I had uh, somebody to translate. Uh, uh, I was uh, speaking, uh, I was speaking in English, there was a translator and they were speaking in Gujarati. And this is from North Gujarat. Uh, they were speaking and uh, my friend was telling me in, in, in English. Please note, no lady in these 40 workshops into 25, none of them wanted cook stove free. They wanted their problems to be solved. First problem they solved is every cook stove has a life. Within two years, it gets corroded. It is made up of metal, and there is a, some kind of moisture in the atmosphere, and there are pollutants, NOx gases, SOx gases, and it gets. We, whatever we buy is always a standard cook stove of uh, making uh, food for five people or something. That is not possible. Sometimes guests come, we have to make food for 10 people, and sometimes we have to make only one cup of tea, so how are these standard cooks are useful? So sir, if these problems are solved, then I ask them, what is the price you are ready to pay? And they said in the range of 70, 70 rupees and 1000 rupees. Then we had an excellent understanding with some, they were going giving loan of 1000 rupees. And uh, anyway, the payback was six months and the uh, bank was getting their money back in, in six months. Six lakh such cook stoves. Next slide. I'm going to show you only pictures. Next slide. Uh, so there are, I will not go into the details. I want to give you more examples. But here, what is the cylinder is conduct cylinder and blue cylinder is non-conducting. And these innovations were done in, the, in ICT that is highly conducting ceramic and poor conducting or insulator ceramics were developed. Those students got innovation awards uh, last year. Next slide. And the, again, fluid mechanics was, uh, was understood in such a way that every point in the cook stove should be active. 
and in this way the next slide earlier you can see that uh, the improved post cook stove gives yellow flame the new cook stove which we have developed gives yellow blue flame uh, the efficiency has gone up to 40 42 percent and this is the usual uh, the usual gas that we see lpg based so there is practically no difference but we are getting 40 percent and lpg based cook stove has more than 80 percent efficiency this is mainly because if our cook stove works for one hour we get blue flame uh, maybe for 20 minutes therefore it is 40 percent so this means we have now decided ourselves we will improve this 40 percent to 60 percent in next three years like princeton university and ford and chrysler they have decided about internal combustion engine next slide this is that insulating and conducting cylinders out of ceramic by the way he made himself next slide initially so we make uh, uh, batch processes continuous in industry and there are various locations where food is required in large quantities and uh, our principal he has a lot of interest in the research and only day before yesterday we have uh, uh, we have stated some of the research problems that we can take and one of the problems we are going to take is converting batch process into continuous process cooking maybe 1000 meals per hour or 10000 meals per hour but using solar energy and then the cost of meal, which comes from coastal or whatever are the classical methods of doing, definitely cost has to be reduced, safety has to be incorporated, pollution has to be made nil. With these objectives, we are going to start, we have selected about four or five problems, uh, and then uh, after the approval sanction from the senior management, we will start working in that direction. The principal benefit I see through this activity at SRICT is when there is a creative atmosphere and ambience generated and several publications start coming from there, then there will be uh, intake of good and better students year after year. Good teachers will start coming. And anyway, uh, I take this opportunity that uh, together, the the chairman, Mrs. Sandra Shroff, the, my dear friend uh, Ashok, together with principal and the faculty and students, they are doing exceedingly well. And my very hearty compliments and congratulations to you. You are really doing a good job. Now we are taking it forward in the research area. And I'm confident that with the, uh, with the support that you are having from the senior management, and the energy levels that you are having, we will make this project also very successful. Next slide. So this is a schematic of uh, the next slide. So first of all, we understand what is the kinetics of cooking. Rice at 95 degrees gets cooked in 12 minutes. Lentils get cooked in 18 minutes. Vegetables get cooked in six minutes. So in a continuous reactor of cooking, where to put vegetables, where to put rice, where to, and where to put tadka, and all these things have been, uh, I think, uh, uh, two models have been made. We have to connect it to solar energy, and a lot of modifications and improvements will occur. But we'll start implementing in the society, right, from the first model. Next slide. This is a problem which is very close to our family, that is uh, agriculture. Uh, this is a slide where whatever is at the bottom is the waste biomass our nation creates. So the crop residue is 600 million tons and extra crop residue is 300 million tons. Uh, this slide was made about 10 years ago and the uh, crop residue has improved further. And this is a huge opportunity. And how huge it is, please try to, please attend to my lecture. You are attending and uh, uh, listen to it more closely. What kind of opportunity our nation 
is giving us. Next slide. So the process of pyrolysis, by the way, the, my activity of pyrolysis has been supported by uh, BEIL, a, a sister company of uh, UPL, being headed by uh, my friend Ashok. And uh, with that money, we created uh, the infrastructure. And now we are going to scale it up to one ton per day and from one ton per day directly to 50 tons per day. Now this is, we have huge experience. What is pyrolysis? Whatever is biomass, heat it at certain temperature in absence of oxygen. And we get gas product, liquid product, and solid product. The solid product, I'll make the short story short. The solid product, which is char, we are, uh, uh, we used it for increasing the productivity of some of the crops in the land. And we took the crop of soybean, the oil seed, mainly because we are big importers of oil seeds as well as edible oil. We import 70,000 crore worth edible oil from, from outside. So whether we can uh, improve the productivity of soybean and the major problem of productivity is organic carbon in our soil. That is the major problem. Of course, there are some micronutrients are required and uh, water management has to be there. But these are the major problems. So we studied what is the, what is the soil analysis of uh, uh, a good soil and uh, bad soil. And we understood the differences. So we took the char and uh, the char had a lot of porosity and sur surface active, the surface is very active. And whatever was the difference between fertile soil and unfertile soil was injected into that, and such soil was spread. And depending upon the, if the soil was anyway fertile, we saw improvement of 10%. But if, if it was terribly unfertile, then we could see 300% uh, improvement. This is what, is what is important. The liquid product that we get, can be used as a source of energy, that is, uh, or can be used as a starting point in a refinery. Uh, so there is a huge source of wealth there. And gases, right now we are considering the uh, pyrolysis process is endothermic. We need energy, so the gaseous product we are burning. So therefore, the technology has come to some stage and therefore, I have developed how to make our nation rich with the help of this technology. Next slide. Uh, this is the infrastructure. Uh, uh, left hand side is a continuous reactor. Right hand side is a batch reactor for pyrolysis. And there is a facility for analysis of raw material and product. Next slide. So imagine. Anyway, the number of villages uh, in, in, in our nation are known. The total arable land uh, where from we get crop is also known. So what I have done here is uh, I have made a cluster of five villages and uh, the average population of five villages put together is 25,000. An average land per cluster is 5,000 hectares. And the extra biomass is 12,000 tons. So let us move on the next slide. And we now do the pyrolysis. The increase in productivity, uh, I have taken average productivity increase of 50%, not 300%, not 20%, 50%. However, our observation is, our nation, whatever it is producing, except some uh, crops like lentils and oil seeds, we are self-sufficient. We don't need extra production. Then what is to be done with this research? So with 5,000 hectares, which are available to the village, if there is 50% productivity, then get the same productivity in two-third land and make one-third land free for sowing the energy crop that is bamboo. 
and uh, separate research uh, has been done to make the productivity of bamboo of 100 tons per hectare per year. And with that, one third land for bamboo, some uh, uh, biomass from the, and getting the, whatever we need from the agriculture sufficient for our nation. So we get bio oil from a cluster of five villages, 64,000 tons, and with 20 rupees a kg, we get 128 crores. Biochar, 48,000 rupees, 48,000 tons, rupees three per kg, and we need to spread about five tons for making the land fertile. Over, we have developed a protocol to which I will come later. So total income for the five villages is 142.4 crores. What is that uh, the, on the expenditure side? Next slide. So we give three rupees to the farmer for their biomass. And uh, if, the, uh, if we take a bamboo, which is 100 tons per hectare, then they get three lakh rupees. And the best cash crop, like uh, any, any, maybe grapes or uh, maybe sugar cane, they don't give three lakh rupees, but this gives three lakh rupees. And uh, we need to give farmers 48 crores out of whatever we had learned that the number of pyrolyzers required are about 10 with capital cost of 15 crores. Depreciation plus interest is 30 crores. Operating cost in terms of utilities, etc., is eight crores. And what I'm doing here, making farmers rich, giving three lakh rupees per hectare and giving opportunity of 500 jobs there and developing technology in such a way that all the fabrication can happen in the villages themselves so that there will be huge opportunity for entrepreneurship and payout period is just 3.4 years for such a cluster. Next, so when implemented, when implemented, what is going to happen? The number of uh, jobs per cluster are 20,000 and uh, we give 12, 12 crores for the job opportunities. Biomass advantage to the farmers is 48 crores. Extra per capita income, see when I visited these three poor villages, the per capita income is 40,000 rupees of these poor districts. So one lakh is average of the nation of this poor district is 40,000. So doubling the income is possible by just one idea. How to generate wealth for our nation, that's what is the subject. Energy produced per cluster is 50,000 tons oil equivalent, which is 2,000 metric tons of oil equivalent. Please note that the present energy consumption in India using all the farms, that is cooking in villages, cooking in cities, all the automobiles, all energy required for industry, all that energy put together is 700 million tons oil equivalent. But the pyrolysis process itself is sufficient when implemented throughout the nation is giving 2,000 million tons, three times what is being consumed and there will be limitless progress which can happen in our nation when energy is available. But after developing such a technology, what is the next challenge? To make a cluster and to convince the villagers, teach them how to handle money, how to handle technology, uh, train the local people. So this is going to be the next challenge which we have taken and we are making two clusters now in such a poor district. But on another subject, which I'm coming to that uh, very soon from now, uh, making such clusters. And there is a possibility of 20 such clusters in, uh, in, in that district, but we'll start with two. We want to learn ourselves. This will be new learning how to work in the society. And we will have to take uh, help of social scientists in that case. Some of the languages we may not be knowing, we'll have to learn that 
and how to teach other practices to the villagers. But number of jobs, what is the capacity? We get 2,000 million tons equivalent of oil and 20 million jobs. What is, what is very important, why this, this activity of innovation is important, there are uh, three main uh, advantages or driving forces for me to work in this direction. First of all, wealth for uh, our poor farmers. We are saying wealth for the nation, but how the new technology double the income of the local farmers? Develop the jobs, that is the second most important driving force. So two crore jobs from one technology. If you develop four, five, six, seven technologies, and I'm going to name them in the subsequent lecture, and then this problem will be solved. But the most important advantage and driving force, I'm a teacher, and for the teacher, the principal job is enable the students and develop all such technologies through students and let my students get which the same atmosphere I want to impart at SRI city of innovation right there. And we want the principal advantage of students solving the problems and we educating them, we enabling them for solving the problems of our nation so that in their future life, they will identify the problem, they will solve the problem, and the overall methodology will be known to them. Next slide. So biotechnologically wise also this can be solved. Next slide. So one is to make bio, one is to make natural gas, the biogas that's making methane out of this. So this technology has been developed here with company called Gangotri in Pune. And not only we make methane, you can see there is a vending, vending machine also, and all auto rickshaws and uh, trucks, and they are being serviced by this. And this is very, very, very economical. Eight kilograms of biomass are required for one kilogram of methane. And uh, that becomes 16 rupees of raw material. We need another eight to 10 rupees for uh, uh, other costs, energy, etc., manpower, overheads, all that is included. And uh, uh, the CNG these days, it's sold at uh, 46 rupees. So very, very uh, profitable. Next slide. So make bioethanol, say, for example. Next slide. And the, there is a pilot plant uh, developed by ICT technology. Uh, there are many more things yet to be solved. This is not uh, a, in, in the final form. Next slide. So this is going to be my, my last part of the lecture. When I went to this Sindhudurga district in the south, you see the nice uh, cashew nuts. But uh, cashew nuts we like, all of us like. But the cashew nut apple, you see the color, such a beautiful color. And 21 lakh tons, 2.1 million tons of these fruits, these are thrown, these are just thrown in uh, Sindhudurga district, part of Ratnagiri district and part of Kodhapur district. So such a huge raw material is available. Now the quick process which comes to mind is fermentation and make ethanol. And for one liter ethanol, we need uh, 20 kgs of these apples. If we give, uh, say, two rupees to the farmer, then 20 kgs means 40 rupees. Cost of ethanol is 48 rupees. So 48 rupees is selling price and 40 rupees is raw material cost. And 40 rupees, now we have to have machinery, we need energy, we need manpower, we need to pay loan of the bank. This is never going to be economical if 48 rupees is the selling price and 40 rupees is the raw material price. So what was done? The cashew nut apple was analyzed carefully. And what was the result of the analysis? 
that nice color is vitamin B. There are dietary fibers. There are antioxidants. There are polyphenols. There is tannin inside. So all these five valuables, an effort was made to separate them. And with the 80% of the current market price, 48 rupees anyway we get from ethanol. Apart from that, by separating these five valuables, we get another 100 rupees. Now, 40 rupees, now we can even give to the farmers 3 rupees a kilogram. And let 60 rupees be the price of the raw material, cost of the raw material. But the finished product now is worth 148 rupees and we solve the problem. Next slide. Similar story is of jackfruits. Similar story is of... So from cashew nut apple, that Sindhu Durga district, there is, uh, there is a possibility. Uh, that is, we have to make these clusters successful and let the benefit of value addition go to the farmers directly so that there will be a real benefit to the nation. So this is the cashew nut story. Uh, there are many more uh, numbers here and uh, I'll not go into the details. Next slide. So these are the processes that cashew apple we screw press, the juice is there, we do solvent extraction and separate antioxidant that is polyphenols. We do solvent extraction and get tannin. Then from bagasse, supercritical fluid extraction gives beta, uh, uh, vitamin B and then it also gives dietary fiber, fibers. And remaining bagasse also gives ethanol which is now not being used. And a, a simple process has been developed in atomic energy to convert any kind of bagasse into sugars using gamma rays. And uh, we will soon develop technology for any kind of bagasse, convert them into sugars uh, using gamma ray technology. Next slide. So here I'm trying to show you how we can generate about 150 rupees from uh, uh, for, for 20 kgs of cashew nut apples, or for 100 kgs of cashew nut apples, about 1500 rupees. Next slide. For, rather than making ethanol, which gives 48 rupees per liter, oxalic acid gives 100 rupees, and oligosaccharides give 1333 rupees. So research is ongoing for value addition further. Ethanol anyway will be required in big quantities, but we can make other value added products, small, small quantities and generate wealth for our nation. Next slide. So jackfruits, you can see that India is making huge quantity of jackfruits and not being used uh, fruitfully. Such a fruit is not being used fruitfully. Next slide. So again, polyphenols are there, again, carbohydrates are there, dietary fibers are there, many more quantities are there. Next slide. So if you take all these, that sugars, vitamin B1, B2, B3, uh, pantothenic acid, vitamin B6, folate, etc., uh, you see the last column is blank because when I started taking the product and adding it up, I'm not believing that there are 16 million tons of jackfruits wasted in the country and I make separate these products and make the value. Addition has, has frightened me. I want to go, I double check, triple check. I've done plenty of things, but that is truth that there is a huge value addition. It is more than 1000 rupees per kilogram. Next slide. Grape drying. Now this technology is very, very important. We, the, from Afghanistan, people purchase uh, raisins at uh, 300 rupees a kilogram. And we get just 90 kilograms. Why? The main reason is, uh, it is, since it is open air drying, there is a dust and there is a, 
uh, also possibility of some microorganism sitting there. Therefore, we get very low price. We get 97 rupees, whereas Afghanistan is about 225 rupees. Next, next slide. This is how we are doing in India in open air. So we are developing technology for making resins. Uh, this time in uh, uh, Corona, uh, the, there is no outflow of grapes from the farmers. The grapes are getting wasted and this technology is very useful under these conditions. Next slide. There are many others, oxidation of aldehydes. I'm just, just showing you annular centrifugal extractors. When you take acetaldehyde, you oxidize, you get either acetic anhydride or acetic acid. Same raw material. Acetic anhydride is 65 rupees a kilogram. Acetic acid is 24 rupees a kilogram. How do we get better selectivity? Annular centrifugal extractor. All phosphoric acids have uranium, and whatever uranium supply we have from our own nature can uh, support not more than 5,000 megawatt. But all the phosphoric acid that we use in fertilizer plants, there is a uranium that we use, our, uh, this annular centrifugal extractor, we get three times the uranium that we get naturally. But when we received quotation from France, 50 crores for one annular centrifugal extractor. We have developed it in, now in 60 lakh rupees and, and is being implemented. Absorption of nitrogen oxides, castor oil cracking. Now titanium technology is being developed. Uh, all of you know our well-known uh, innovator of our nation, Dr. K. K. Harda. And he has taken this problem to his heart, either from red mud or from uh, uh, the sand from the eastern coast, convert it and develop our own technology. I'm becoming part of his family uh, in order to support in terms of understanding fluid mechanics at variety of stages and understanding the rate controlling step, understanding the relationship between fluid mechanics and rate controlling step so that the costs can be reduced considerably. And in the group, uh, which is of course represented by Dr. Garda, we say that we will make titanium 2,500 rupees per kg in the cost of aluminum, that is 250 rupees a kilogram. I'm, I have given you a large number of examples where wealth is hidden. Doubling the income is very much possible. We can even increase it further. Next slide. More or less, I think, uh, let us come to the close. Here is the solar energy related. Maybe I will give separate lecture on solar energy, but this is uh, a worldwide problem. We know that or oh, the uh, sun gives 1,62,000 terawatt and total energy requirement of the, of the globe is 15 terawatts, 1,5, whereas so sun gives 1,62,000. And this is known, this is not to uh, invent, but what is important is at what cost we can we can recover this. And this, I think this project we will take at SRICT. Uh, we have traveled along some distance at ICT. I will be very happy to transfer whatever is accumulated knowledge and develop additional knowledge. Next slide. Here it shows that, uh, next slide, I think let us move fast. Next slide. This is the preliminary design of the reflector. Next slide. Next slide. What it shows here, our nation has 16 million hectares barren land and 2.7 million, 2.7 percent of that 18 percent is uh, capable of producing 1.5 terawatt of electricity. And right now the nation is making only uh, 300, uh, 300 megawatt, 300,000 megawatts, 3 lakh megawatts, and the requirement is 15 megawatt, 15 lakh megawatt. So that will be possible just in 2.7%.
But what is important in the next slide, it is shown that is the capital cost has to come down. When it is 300, the IRR is 3.4%, no industrialist will come forward. That is even after the government giving subsidy. But government, without giving subsidy, we have to develop technology so that per meter square cost is $75. And then here I have shown that uh, the IRR is 11% without government subsidy. With government subsidy, it becomes 21%. So with SRICT, uh, that is we're working together, I'm confident we will, we will do huge progress. Next slide. Now, and we can publish in international the nature that public particular uh, periodical is considered as most prestigious in the world. So in nature, climate change, uh, our effort of uh, cost reduction, uh, they published that. So this is also required, that is the generation of new knowledge, teaching the new knowledge to the students and giving it to the society, then we become world-class world institution. Next slide. So, and what we said, we have to make land fertile. And here, if we want innovations from the society, we have to improve scientific temper of the society. And this is the most important program of my colleague. Uh, my colleagues are there, I think. Uh, I could uh, understand that Dr. Jain Zoshi is there in the audience, but this is most important program that we have to make our nation fertile for innovations, and that is what Marathi Vidyan Parishad is doing. Dr. Vyas, who is heading atomic energy, he comes from Gujarat, and he has requested me to start Gujarat Vidyan Parishad to make Gujarat fertile and uh, improve the scientific temper so that the students get the advantage of. So what are the qualities required? No complaint in life. No excuses in life. Smiling face. Improve creativity in the society. And try to see, we learn in chemical technology, chemical engineering, mass balance and energy balance. If the society is giving us, see, I, I'm retired. 11 years ago, and after retiring 11 years, I'm getting pension of one lakh rupees. One lakh rupees per month, and per capita income is one lakh per year. I'm getting 12%, 12 times more after retiring from active service 11 years later. So after when this one lakh rupees and pension definitely comes on the first day. So on that day, I introspect every month. What for this poor nation is paying me one lakh rupees? So I must give something to the society. Time efficiency wise, this I tell in my every lecture, every three hours, can we sit and honestly introspect what is I have done in last three hours? And it is now known that the average time efficiency of Indians is 3%. We waste 97% time. We either uh, have uh, uh, brewed over the past, whatever mistakes we have made in the past, we uh, worry about them and we don't know the future and therefore we have a lot of anxiety about the future. So a lot of time goes into that. A lot of time goes in, let it be uh, either any village or town or our city, our any state, our nation, uh, our nations, the most important uh, book you can say is Mahabharat. And in Mahabharat, what happened is Mahabharat, we know Kauravas and Pandavas, and they destroyed each other at the end. And a lot of Mahabharat happens on, on each industry level also, each uh, uh, village level also, and then, Therefore, the productivity of our nation is poor. So all of us, I think, we need to uh, resolve to ourselves, that is how to improve our own time efficiency, our energy efficiency, and what is that we get from the society, and what is that we give to the society. We became free in 1947, 
But as far as any technology is concerned, you name anything, we are dependent on. So as we don't have financial freedom, we are still not free. And we together, the students of all institutions, teachers of all institutions, all the senior management of the entire country put together, we need to create such innovative atmosphere and make our India wealthy. Thank you all of you for listening to me for quite a long time. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Raju by Joy. He left all his work and he's been listening to you. He couldn't get up. <laughs> but just now he's gone. But he's got some work to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. I, I now know, can understand why you're, you want my Goba gas plant to be superseded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Every, every, every village should have a pyrolysis plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we will take it further, one ton per day. And not only uh, uh, BEIL has helped in the, the faculty members from SRS City, the starting work has been there now, almost finishing their work, but they put a lot of efforts in uh, plastic paralysis and uh, combination of plastic and uh, RDF and, and several combinations. Now we need to put a lot more effort to, to commercialize it, to make it attractive. So we will have a one ton per day plan to begin with. And we know all the technology for taking it up to 50 tons per day, as I said earlier. And let us make a uh, lot of wealth out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. There's gold in that. Um. <laughs> okay. Anybody, uh, you, I will be very happy to answer any questions. Actually, when I was actually teaching, no? I was getting best teacher award and nobody was asking question at the end of my lecture. Take it lightly, yeah? take it lightly. Uh, so madam, you good can afternoon, sir. Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Samyak. Uh, sir, I would like to ask this question, like the, uh, the biomass of which we are planning, I mean, can it be implemented on a particular individual household level as well? Since I basically, if I own a, I own a particular house in Pune, I have some trees around and I, I have a sufficient amount of bio waste which is generated in my house itself. So can that be particularly be utilized to make sure that we have create a certain amount of I mean, biogas plant, which is, which is supposedly, which is supplementary to the current uh, Gas uh, objective. Yeah, 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 that's right. Now, the simple thing that can be done is uh, we have uh, from every household some uh, uh, bed and some uh, dry waste is there. Plus, this waste is there in the form of dry leaves. And Marathi Vidyan Parishad, together with BRC, have developed a technology for uh, normally composting takes 40 days, 50 days, sometimes 90 days. And this technology uh, makes it um, uh, the compost in less than 15 days, close to 10 days. And we have now implemented this in two societies, one of 80 plat flats and one of 300 flats. That is, we collect the wastage uh, from, and this, uh, the, the leaves also make compost and then uh, one of our senior members of Marathi Vindyan Parishad, Mr. Herleker, he has developed technology for uh, the fruit, leafy vegetables and fruit vegetables. And all this waste, local waste is sufficient 
for growing the entire requirement of fruit fruit vegetables and leafy vegetables of of that society so we have implemented at two locations we have to implement make these success stories on the larger scale we are moving in that direction we want to take about five societies now and uh, were five young people uh, the two girls and three from their readiness to take this activity uh, we want to make them entrepreneurs they must individually get about 50000 rupees per month and uh, they should pay for their assistance they should pay for utilities and how we have developed uh, a model uh, how to uh, generate the capital cost by the way it is not much for this technology but our people our students are very poor even that 3 lakh rupees what is required they cannot raise that 3 lakh rupees and they don't have can uh, get it from the bank also mainly because they don't have anything worth uh, to show to the bank but we will find something there are plenty good people in our nation and uh, i think with their help so to answer your question i think let us take care of such a waste the household waste plus the waste in the premises and uh, through composting grow something in your own society so that the value addition is at least 20 times at least 20 times thank you sir proton sir yeah ravindra kulkarni 1988 batch your student yeah yeah it's pairing like this you i yeah. recognize you yeah sir my question is uh, do you have any uh, projects in the solar uh, cell manufacturing because i heard that many uh, solar cell equipments we have to import from other countries absolutely absolutely so that area is of material science uh, our groups in ict uh, they have not taken this problem okay i think uh, that there are many laboratories who are uh, who are in this particular area like national chemical laboratory they are working the uh, professor ogle there he works on uh, uh, in this area iit mumbai works in the same area and there are many many laboratories <laughs> work okay thank you typically, uh, typically we go to the villages and try to find the opportunities there and from those opportunities uh, try to establish technologies also locally generate wealth locally and disseminate wealth also locally that has been the overall protocol of our group in general yeah rough mr sir practice here from uh, 2010 right uh actually i want to ask one thing sir uh, in your uh, reactor of paralysis design uh, with the picture you have shown you have shown screw feeder and screw reactor yeah but uh, my doubt is and uh, the bio oil which is produced uh, it will be in gaseous phase or oil phase the it will be in gaseous phase i think then we have to cool it and how the how the uh, bio oil will come out from the screw reactor or uh, there is a series of other reactor we, uh, we, you will be using in this no you are absolutely right that is uh, at the pyrolysis uh, temperature oil, where we can use the bio oil. yeah yeah at the pyrolysis temperature bio oil is not in the liquid phase it is in the vapor phase so what leaves the reactor is condensed in a series of condensers you will be happy to know that after first condensation we get sugars and after second condenser we get the cresols and xylenols and the very useful products and then eventually we get acetic acid and aldehydes and ketones somewhere else we get benzene toluene xylene depending upon raw material but we don't need another reactor reactor does all the job Uh, the liquid product we get just by condensation i said just by condensation but design is uh, demanding 
is an of condenser is demanding but we have been able to make it sir is there any back pressure in the screw reactor because vapors will be generated and solids are coming from uh, a hopper ah. so uh, reverse flow is possible reverse flow is very much possible uh, that is uh, that is back flow through the screw feeder and uh, through the hopper the gases can go out that possibility is there but uh, uh, the gap between the screw and barrel that needs to be adjusted in such a way that there is a good pressure drop for the reverse flow Okay, sir. And sir, what so this is a problem if precision fabrication is not done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where we can use this bio oil, sir? The bio oil, the, <coughs> the lowest level of application, the lowest <coughs> level is substitute for uh, uh, either diesel or kerosene for. Uh, electricity generation or use it in some engines and people buy it at uh, 30 rupees per liter i have taken 20 rupees for our casting but there are many many valuables energy is uh, about 1 rupee per 1000 kilo calories we pay 5 6 rupees for coal because the, the, it has 5000 kilo calories per kilogram we pay gas uh, much more than that because it has 14000 kilo calories 14000 more so here the kilo calories is very low low price we getting benzene toluene xylene we getting phenols we getting cresols we getting xylenols we getting uh, okay, several ketones and all those products separated from each other that will give nice nice value addition and whatever one ton per day we are planning the raw material that we have in bil we are getting good quantity of phenol so we are interested in phenol right now we are interested in phenol. but from different raw materials we will get different things yeah Good afternoon sir is there any at least required for paralysis or only thermal process is required no catalyst the uh, thermal process is possible catalytic process is also possible and there are still improved versions which is called hydropyrolysis the objective here is there is certain quantity of carbon hydrogen and oxygen in the raw material anyway uh, the, this is our biomass is a mixture of cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and if you take cellulose it is a cho compound and when we heat it then uh, the, the either oxygen reacts with carbon or hydrogen to give up the pyrolysis products but that oxygen when reacts with carbon there is a carbon loss and that is a, as far as overall economics is concerned any carbon loss gives poor performance the poor economics poor profitability and if you want to save carbon then we do hydropyrolysis that is use catalyst and hydrogen and make prevent the formation of co2 and make all carbon in biomass useful and hence improve the the overall economy of the process so that catalytic uh, Uh, hydropyrolysis is possible so there are versions like this that is whatever liquid we get we process it separately we change the conditions develop a catalyst in such a way that we get desired product suppose our own factory needs phenol or our own factory needs cresol then whether we can put some catalyst and get uh, that is sell phenol and buy cresol that, rather than that do or so, do something so all these versions are available available possible but we'll have to work hard for every possibility yes sir thank you sir thank you madam good afternoon sir uh, this is snehal from uh, srikshtof college
uh, first of all sir thank you for creating the uh, spark and uh, make a, taking us back to our uh, phd times so now uh, we feel that much more we have to do in all these fields sir i have a sir simple question sir uh, you explained regarding the chromatographic separation and it was uh, uh, we can separate the the isomers and all can this uh, technology work for the stereo isomers or enantiomers sir because in specifically pharma industries over here there is a basic problem of separating the enantiomers yeah 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 absolutely that can be done the same technology sir can be no no you you tell me how these are analyzed right now sir by chromatography only the, they they are analyzed by the same yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the, yeah. they come out at different times right right sir so that your column is some 4 mm 3 mm diameter correct correct sir of which i make 3 meter diameter yes sir yeah the same technology which you are using in hplc so i make yeah. hplc on the commercial scale okay okay sir okay okay, okay. thank you thank you sir thank so, you so we get those peaks yeah so we have to honor zoom i think yes sir thank you very much yeah thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you so much thank you everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but making it possible how many there are now yeah 56 people i think are still here 56 people were there <laughs> thank you madam thank you very much i really enjoyed it physically because you are presence itself is going to give a lot of boost to the college and the activities and i'll see to it that at least four or five problems are taken in near future and taken them up to the end this paralysis we need to take up to end yes. and we will take yes. some problems in solar solar energy teachers of sri city appear to be terribly interested and there is one more problem posed to me that is the uh, take care of excess sludge in our uh, uh, cdp uh, yes. how to do that that also so maybe three four problems and uh, there are five faculty members who have shown lot of interest we'll have to create some fellowships for phd students mm. and our master students can also participate as far as master students are concerned they it will be their education they cannot give much to the technology because the available time with them is only for training them for not for contributing yes uh, right you will take up this project sir so you will take it sir yeah yes sir yes 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 <laughs> sir uh, with your permission shall we close now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Take Madam's permission also. Yeah. <laughs> I think you really done well. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Then this. Yeah. Sorry. From ten o'clock to twelve thirty. Yes. Thank you for the patience of everybody. But Thank I you very much. To, I there. wanted to tell all the opportunities. I I cannot prevent myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great lecture sir quite inspirational thank you very much of it yes sir raju bhai was he close. just came to look and then stayed for two and a half hours yeah yeah, yeah. to our 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> good, good 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 okay bye okay sir bye, bye. thank, thank, you. You, thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you ma'am it's a great